like to call to order the Germantown School District Buildings and Grounds Committee uh, meeting at 5 p.m. on September 16th. Roll call. Uh, Medved is absent excuse in, in, its, in his place. Mr. Ewart? Here. Mr. Loth? Here. Uh, Meg Cuts? Here. And I am here. Next item, agenda revisions and approval. I'd like to take a motion. I'd like to make a motion um, to move one of the items here in the agenda. Item 4A, I'm sorry, uh, 5A, long range facility planning. We've discussed this in the past. So I'd like to move it to unfinished business and make it for discussion only. We have a motion on the floor for Mr. Ewart to move items Item 5A from reports and updates down to six, unfinished business, discussion only. Do I have a second? No. I'll second. Mr. Loth with a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number four, approval of the minutes. Approval of the August 12th, 2024 meeting minutes. Move to approve the minutes of August 12, 2024. We second. A, we have a motion by Mr. Loth, to second by Mr. Ewer for the approval of the August 12th minute, meeting minutes. Any discussion? I'll abstain as I wasn't on at that time. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And do we have any abstentions? Aye. Uh, we've moved item number five, reports and updates, so we'll skip that one. Down to item six, unfinished business, long-range facility planning uh, update, Mr. Lord. Yes, thank you. Uh, so as discussed most recently at the August 12th uh, Buildings and Grounds Committee meeting, staff underwent a request for pr proposal process to seek a qualified firm um, to assist us in creating and retaining a comprehensive facilities condition assessment um, in, in helps for our long-term um, facilities master planning. Um, the RFP was sent out to eight firms. Uh, a district-wide tour was given to four of the firms, and three firms submitted proposals. Two of them submitted them together, um, and that was C.D. Smith and Plunkett Rayish Architects. Um, <clears throat> no firm was instructed whether they had or they could team up or not. Uh, there was no benefit to it. Uh, but it was pretty open-ended that way for whatever they felt would meet our needs the best. So, um, I shared here the evaluation criteria that we used um, in selecting or getting close to select a, a firm to move forward with. Uh, that's the completeness of proposal, which is 10% of it. Technical qualifications and competence, which is 25%. Um, record of past performance, plays in at 40%. And their approach to our work. Uh, which is uh, essentially how they see best suited for our long-range facility plan. Um, as part of the proposal attached for C.D. Smith and PRA specifically, uh, you will see that it, it, they had set it up as a step process. Uh, we are currently only looking at the first step, which is the facilities condition assessment um, as it relates to the entire long-term facility master planning. I would, I would add to Mr. Lord's um, comments that that was clearly identified in our uh, RFP to all the firms, that we are currently only looking at analysis of a long range facility plan related to our current conditions and what we need for upgrades. Um, even though in the visual it does outline their five step plan, um, the other firm that we did interview also had a plan, a step by step plan similar to that. Um, but we made it clear in those meetings, Mr. Paul, if you were there, um, and both of them to say that right now we need a where are we at um, report so that we can plan locally for long term um, internally to help offset Mr. Lord's five year capital plan to look beyond that and get into the guts and skeletons of our, our buildings, for lack of a better term, to better understand um, how we can continue to maintain quality facilities for our community and our students. And uh, just to also step in, I would concur with, with both of the uh, gentlemen speaking regarding um, the fact that we were, we're very early in, in this process. And 
for lack of a better way to put it, we don't know what we don't know yet. And that's, that was really the, that's really the goal of, of this specific project. Um, and I'll just highlight too, one of the, the things that I made sure to point out, and I may have mentioned this in a previous meeting, was the fact that uh, whoever would move forward, ultimately we would ask them to step in front of this committee and step in front of the board to provide continuous updates. May not necessarily be every single meeting, but, but when, there's, uh, when there's steps along the way that there are milestones along the way that we've hit, um, that, that they would be asked to do that. So um, anything else? Not off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, I, I'd open it up for either the committee or for the rest of the board, Ms. Cuts, uh, for any questions or other discussion. Mr. Ewart. Um, leading up to this, I was able to attend the C.D. Smith meeting. I was unable to attend the second uh, firm's meeting. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, I be, kind of became a little concerned at the, the original C.D. Smith presentation of this process, one through five, called A to Z, on, uh, from study to referendum, was what the presentation was. Uh, I'm a little confused at how as a district, we ask for a study, and we have firms come back and s supply us with a, in this scenario, a five-step plan to complete a referendum. We didn't ask, uh, or quite frankly, at this moment, have appetite for. Uh, I think part of this was to figure out where our buildings are currently at, probably project a little into the future um, as far as their use and conditions specifically in my, maybe on the mechanical side and spacing side, um, kind of balance that against um, student populations and potential enrollment growth, or, or, or if that would decrease, uh, where that would leave us. That was, that was my understanding of what this step was. Um, so a little concerning that we have two firms coming back um, providing us reports or uh, a process to guide us from the question we asked to a referendum we didn't ask for at this time. Um, I, I don't see how either of these firms would provide us a report if it's in their best interest to uh, become profitable off of a referendum to provide us information that um, wouldn't suggest that that's the path we go down. That's concerning to me. Now, I know there's not, this is, this is the industry quote unquote standard, um, and there aren't companies out there that maybe do just this first step, but I, I just don't see how, how this is the right first step for us um, at this time. Obviously, I, I want to continue with this studies plan, the facilities use studies. Uh, we need that information, but as far as this direction into a referendum, that's going to be part of our strategic use or our strategic plan moving forward, which we'll be talking about in the near future with Mr. N Dr. Reuter. Um, I, I guess at this point, between that concern and the following concern, which is that I had to ask the administration to supply this full board with the packet of information provided by both firms, and that wasn't just outright done, and none of that was included in this nor the previous meeting's discussion. I can't see that we're anywhere near the, the appropriate level of understanding of what we're getting ourselves into to move forward with the decision at this time. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Just one a uh Maybe a refresh for my memory. I know C.D. Smith was our contractor for the last re referendum. Was, uh, I think PRA was our designer last go around too, right? I, I believe I so. so. Yeah, that was before my time, but I believe that's yeah. true. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Any other questions or comments? Uh, I'm not sure where that will leave us as far as the next steps moving forward. Um, Mr. Lord and I spoke this morning that um, at the will of this group, um, we could have both of the firms that did act on our RFP. Um, 
again, not every firm did, to come in and present via the building committee um, so that there could be direct questions from the building committee and members of the board, if so be it, um, if they're willing to do that, if they want our business moving forward to answer some of those questions. And we could uh, make sure that we focus in on probably in the case of PRA, uh, C.D. Smith, as well as the other um, firm in that in those first two stages related to um, a facilities conditions report and then what that the implications of that could be from a standpoint of space and longevity of the life of our buildings. I'm happy to reach out. We've discussed reaching out to both firms tomorrow morning to share the results of this meeting and what those next steps could look like um, and have those meetings at either a district office or here um, for review. Uh, with the small amount of information that was provided in the packet, uh, this $36,000 that's in reference to only s step one seat facility conditions assessment, did they provide us what steps two, three, four, and five would cost? Uh, the MSA engineering services, I, I tried to highlight that, but that would be part of the second into third covers up to uh, without there being a defined line. So uh, that is not played into this. this the ten and five thousand dollars is specifically for the facilities condition assessment, which is what uh, their intent of this process is at this point. And our feedback to both firms was we're not talking dollars past that first stage because that's what we were tasked to look into. How do we alleviate the concerns that we're putting in charge the company to conduct a study to inform us what we should or shouldn't do, whose financial's best interest is to recommend arriving at stage five of a full referendum. We tell them that's a concern. That I think no matter what firm we were to select, if we had all eight that we, um, that you had four in-person, right, evaluations or, or tours, um, regardless of who picks it up, I, I, I truly believe they're going to share with you their long-term process and we have to then build a relationship with that firm to make sure that they're not providing information to get to step five if it's the will of the school district and the board to stop after step one and my, because our, our again our, our focus i believe was not we're not looking at referendum we are looking at we need a comprehensive report of our six sites absolutely. we do not have that on file it was not thoroughly done previously to this administration and this membership of the board and we need that to think long term mm -hmm. to be fiscally responsible to our taxpayers on how we're using our local dollars and inform Frank and his his department on how that five-year capital plan is truly a true needs assessment. How do we address the concern of the information provided? This scenario provides us with one set of information. I actually don't, I have no idea what the second proposal's costs were. Um, I have nothing to compare and contrast. I'm just being provided this singular recommendation. I think that, that goes to the next month. We can bring through Buildings and Grounds Committee the uh, both proposals um, published as well as a breakdown of cost analysis. And if the board does want to engage or this committee wants to engage in a formal interview process, um, now that we've gone through one stage with internally with Mr. Pollock, myself, and Ms. Altendorf, um, and Mr. Lord, we can bring that those groups if they want to continue to be a contender for our business in front of the committee or the full board and have them present and ask them those questions. I appreciate that. I think, I think we need to build out that the further information and understanding around this before we would proceed forward. I know that might mess with the timeline a little bit. I think it's a necessary step and I think the community expects that from us. Not saying that that's the case, but at hand it seems that we just rely on um, falling into with C.D. Smith and, and their group um, when it comes to these types of projects. And it may be because they're the best around. I, I haven't had to pick them yet for a project of this size, mm -hmm. right? But um, I think we owe the community that understanding and, and uh, information that we're weighing more more. Um, data before proceeding. So just so I'm clear, this initial money is just for step one? 
Correct. And then we would figure out where to go from there once we have those results. Right. The, the expectation would be that um, the firm firms would do a non-destructive review of all the facilities, including uh, outdoor areas as well, and would generate um, a list. Um, they would probably, I would assume, they would have their own priority structure, saying these are the most important versus these, my term, nice to haves. Um, and then at that point in time, once that's produced, step one is complete. And then we would take that away internally and either agree, disagree, do our own prioritization. Obviously, there's budgeting and the financial aspect to it, all of those type of things, which would be a piece of a larger strategic uh, plan for the district itself. So there, there'd be multiple things that would live under the district umbrella. This would be just one of those pieces. Ultimately, the result of stage one would, or step one, uh, would be a comprehensive, thick report of all of our six sites, the internals of each building and the externals of each building, and then laid out um, would be a report for each building based on priority needs. Um, red being, these are things you need to address within the next five years to green long-term issues and yellow intermediate. Okay. I think that's, that's important too. When we're talking about this isn't, a year-long process, right? This is five years, correct? Six years, because we do do uh, diligence with uh, Mr. Lord's capital improvement plan, where we're doing big projects, as you know, as a board and committee that you've approved in the past couple years. Um, but there are things that we don't know about when you pop the ceiling tiles and start to crawl around and and see what internally might need or externally as well. I think it's important for the community to, to hear on this discussion while the, the information provided here is using the term referendum and a, and a step process towards a referendum. I don't think the board is in a position right now where we're looking to head that direction. Um, so so I'd, I'd ask the community to understand that and, and not react in a manner that you know, they've all said they're, they're not pro-referendum, but here they are taking steps towards a referendum. This is This was intended provide us information of our current facilities and conditions and project a little into the future uh, on potential need for that, not um, to race down a track towards a referendum. I think that's very important for, our, for the community to understand. Um, Ultimately, I think, I think we're all in we don't know what we don't know right now and yeah. we need that information. I think, I think we're all in support of the studies, the facility studies being done to provide us that information and meld that in and dovetail that in with um, the strategic plan moving forward, the community is going to also have a voice in, um, in that this isn't a separate project. Correct. And in, in, in the previous uh, Buildings and Grounds meeting, I also made that point as well, that, that this was a process and very early on, and I, I did say that R word during the meeting, but pointed out that's not, that's not the, uh, that's not the end game here, that, that we need to figure out what we, what we need to prioritize. The, the information I think provided here is these, this firm's approach to the question. I don't think anyone, I don't think in the RFP we asked, hey, how do we get to a referendum? I'm guessing it was not that vague or, or to that measure or direction. It was simply around the facility studies. Is that correct, Mr. Lord? Yes. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, without speaking for either one of them, <laughs> I think the long-range facility plan is really what roped in that that goal set, sure. uh, which it runs not uncommon um, in future present time, I guess. Okay. Present and future time. I, I would, as a, just sitting on this committee tonight with an absentee, but I would definitely welcome further discussion or presentation from each firm um, and some further information to be shared with the full board before. I think that's a, the best step forward. Your chair, so do we know, Mr. Lowe? Yeah, with regard to PRA, I'd be interested to know uh, if anyone, if they've had turnover, or is it the same group of people that uh, were involved in our 2016 referendum? I believe it was. So you, you, you know, this would tell us if there's anyone there that's been through our buildings before, or is everyone new in? 
this will be the first time they've seen our facilities. You know, I think that's a an important question to answer here. We're going to get a kick at that question next month. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they are they are the same though. I, I, there, there there's some new, but there's some that, that worked on our specific worked both at CD Smith and PRA. Yep. Correct. Okay. I actually learned quite a bit on the tour that we did uh, from one of them specifically, so that was nice. Free. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Barney? Yeah, Dr. Reuter, I heard you, I think you mentioned our six locations. That would be the schools, but what about district office? Is that included in this review as well? Uh, I think our priority is the buildings that house our uh, children. So we, I we did not ask in the RFP for anything related to district office okay. as we want to make sure that where our 3,800 kids and 600 employees are and the other 30 of us over at district office and that could lead to down the road, you know, do we need a district office? Those are all conversations related to what comes out of this report. So you Thank I want to make sure our focus is on where we, I agree. we house I, our kids. I agree with that, but we do have 30 employees in that building. We and, do. And I'm in it enough to to notice hey, the air some conditioning doesn't work, but other than that, it's great. So <laughs> maybe a few other bugs. Yeah, but. yeah, bugs, bugs, right? But good question, Mr. Barney, that the RFP was strictly related to school-based buildings. Thank you. Would there be ability to, well, I suppose not at this point, because they've been turned. Yep. Good. It's your building. <laughs> Mr. Brown. Clarifying question. Um, President Ewart mentioned having the firms come back in and present. Or would we be telling them at that point, just present on items one and two, and kind of not do all the way to the? Yeah, we, we, could, we could ask them to focus strictly on the con, uh, building condition assessment report process and what the next steps would be. Okay, just wanna make we'll, that we'll clear. We'll talk so with both firms with within the next couple days. The full show and go through that yep. again. That we'd now like a second follow up that's more focused versus the big scope of. Yeah, I mean, I can see. I think that would be I important. Can, I can see step two playing into the mm -hmm. uh, yep. strategic planning. We might be able to address that view our own lenses. Yep. Um, this is just we need building experts in to tell us mechanically. Yep. Yay, nay. And though you have X amount of square footage in your building, what does that mean per pupil count versus how many people can actually be in the building before it's a yeah, code cool. violation, which that's are two very different are, things. Yeah, very different numbers, right? Yep. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Okay. Item number seven, new business. There is none. Item number eight, I take one final motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Ewart, second by Loth. Any discussion? Uh, just a quick discussion. We didn't do this at the beginning, but I'd like to oh. welcome Trustee <laughs> for our first meeting. She's our village rep. She's a voting member of this, um, this committee. Uh, we're excited to have you. Um, bring in some of that village perspective. Specifically, I think in part of this planning session here in the facilities, you might be able to bring some unique village um, perspective, I guess the best way to say it, uh, into the discussion, and we really appreciate that. So thank you for volunteering your time to come and join us. Well, thanks for inviting me, and you're welcome. <laughs> Anything else? Mr. I'd just like to say welcome also, Trustee Cuts. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? Say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting ends at 524.